crease it. Yep. <laughs> crease it. Yep. Fun. Whoa. Like, is that a fold or a crease? What's the, I mean, this is what architecture does. It always confuses you about things you thought you knew about, or maybe it just sort of opens you up to other possibilities of what a thing can be. Hi everyone, Sam here, lead teacher of ARC 201. In this video, you will be learning about exploration one of the three main design actions you'll be doing in this course. You'll actually watch me design by making physical models, exploring just like you're doing for project two. You can watch me struggle, uh, get inspired, get tired, and eventually successfully perform the tasks laid out in project two. Design is nonlinear meaning there's no set recipe that you follow every single time. In fact, if you were going to chart your exact order of operations, you'd find that every project is at least a little bit different. Um, so design becomes very personal. It becomes about your voice and how you approach the project and how you want to ask the questions uh, and find the solutions. There are, however, key design actions that seem to come up again and again in just about every project. Exploration involves making lots of things, in this case, physical models. So I'm filming this after having done a bunch of exploration, um, searching far and wide, for different ideas, being open to whatever comes my way as I make a model and then study it, working with some different materials, looking at things from different vantage points, and not trying to get stuck on any one style or way that it looks, um, just exploring. So you can think of the exploration process um, kind of like a sailor would be exploring an ocean, right? Uh, you want to be looking far and wide, as far and wide as possible and being open to what's way out there um, as you get into this process. So a sailor and the ocean, the more, they, the more ocean they explore, the more they discover, right? This thing's kind of in my way. I thought this would be a neat prop, but kind of annoying a little bit but it shows you all the stuff I made um, and models for you that I want you to make a lot of stuff look I made a bunch of models the first thing I would do to start project two is I would read the prompt probably more than once and I would get to this list of verbs and I'd read them over and I'd be looking for ones that sparked some kind of inspiration or some kind of image in my mind about an interior daylit experience. And as soon as I've got a spark, uh, I want to start making something that builds on that spark and see where it goes. So I might sketch with trace for a minute or on a sketchbook. And as soon as I've got a little something there worked out, I want to jump right into it making a model and I just want to follow that spark and see where it goes and this is going to be our main tool for learning and thinking are these physical models so I'm going to take it up to the light and I may use a flashlight to study how daylight enters so this flashlight becomes the Sun if I get stuck, I get sick of the verb I'm working on, I can put this down and I can pick up my list and try another verb. If that spark kind of leads to a new idea on the same verb, I'll go there. And I'll just really try to have fun and stay loose 
and be open to whatever ideas come my way. So maybe, I, I mean, I've got a rectangle here. I'm just gonna crease this thing up. Crease it up, crease it up, crease it up. Fun. And now the cardboard has all these creases on it. Yeah, so I can actually look very quickly start to get in here. Just roll this thing up. Now that's all creased. So I think now that I've rolled it up, I'm realizing a crease is best noticed if um, there's something flat to kind of juxtapose a crispness of a flat surface and then a creased surface. I do, I mean, this is pretty cool. It's really accentuating a lot of creases. I can just see all this light play happening on it just with the lights in the room. I was thinking I want to actually work with a different material. This is a little too hard. So when I start to move this thing around and scrunch it up, I notice, you know, it makes these creases. And these creases can be opportunities for the material to start to move, um, grow, you know, all around this crease. And it can twist, and I don't know. So I wanted to see what happened when I did that with some paper. Yeah. Now I'm just sort of moving it around and watching it. I don't know. Maybe it's too messy. Like maybe I just need to be more simple with it just to start. Ooh. Hmm. What? But that's all. I mean, are those creases? I don't know if I'd call that creases. I feel like it's just gotta be simple. Like, is that a fold or a crease? What's the, I mean, this is what architecture does. It always confuses you about things you thought you knew about. Or maybe it just sort of opens you up to other possibilities of what a thing can be. So there, that's a crease, right? I mean, that, come on, that's a crease, that is a crease. A paper behaves so differently than cardboard. Feeling a little lost here. Oh, don't yawn on camera. Ooh. Ooh. Struggling. This is where it is. You're in the tunnel. You're in the design process tunnel. And um, you don't know where you're going. And you barely even know where you've been. Oh and you got nothing yet coming up empty playing around with the verb now at this point i could bail on crease um, but i've gotten little sparks here and there that there's something fun going on with this um, and i have not yet stumbled upon what that could be 
kind of want to have this thing curl all the way around. Ooh. Man. Getting good ideas. Making good ideas. Just got to sit there and do it for a while. I'm working too big. Okay, so I mean, you know, and then I want to just let it live. The crease creates structure. So like, how do I So then I've got a nice crisp cube. And then on a little like extension pocket. This can just fit into there, essentially. And light can come down through there. You can kind of illuminate it with various things. I'm gonna throw a little piece of tape on there. Right. I'm off. Kind of wanted a little scoop it away. Get something neat. Ooh, and then that, as soon as I took that photograph, that gave me another idea. So what if this actually came down? Do I have enough material? I don't really know if I got enough material. But I think I did, I'm gonna give it a try. Um, so I actually want to lift it up a little bit. This whole operation, that's going to be too much. Or maybe that's good. Oh, forgot about this long piece of tape. Try to hang on to that, buddy. Okay. We'll get back at this. Okay, now I just... Hi. Oh, hi. Hey there. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Yeah, hi. Um, hey, I noticed you're not working the way I want you to. I was hoping we could talk sometime about that.
Oh no, I'm using. I want to cover that. Oh yeah, cover that. And I also want to cover that. I want to cover that a bit more. Cool. Now we're getting something neat too. I'm just blocking the light. So working on the verb to crease, I had this idea of some roof condition, overhead condition that had a crease in it that disappeared. And I really like how the crease just sort of stops and it just turns into a curve. I just made this really simple box, um, two different height walls and then a backstop so that I can put my camera or my eye in here and see sort of what's happening. Really simple, a great place to start um, exploring from. Don't want to get too complicated right away. So I was playing around with like how to get the paper on here. I put it this way and it doesn't really do much when I'm down in here. And then I turned it around and saw that it started to make this, sort of started to make this arch that disappears using this headlamp as a sun. And I want a little stand for my camera. And then I could start to make this, my arch, sort of start to make it glow. So now I see that, I'm kind gonna of play around with like adding another crease. I don't know how far apart it needs to be. I don't know how long it needs to be. These are all, this would be like iteration, would be exploring this. Um, but I just wanna do this for a minute. What if I just make a crease like barely anything? Just a real short one. Part of it was like the weight of the paper itself. Just adding some structure, just a short crease. Oh, it behaves very differently. Hmm. So I could imagine doing lots of variations on this. So I've been exploring crease for a little while. I'm starting to get kind of sick of it. I'm going to move on to a different verb. And I looked through the list and I selected curve. And I have just, I went and got some more paper and just a real initial idea of making the walking surface curved and start with that. And I'm going to try to just curve this paper in different ways. Yeah, I think I might just tape this down. Oh. Kind of, I can move the curve around a little bit. Or I can, I could pin it, twist it. Okay, cool. What if I had, um, curve going the other way. This is too big. This is huge. How small can I make this work? This feels too big. Okay, got ourselves a curve. I bet I need a box of some kind.
other thing is I got to make a space for my camera and my eye to get in and look. I actually think I want to see the other side. Close your pen, don't let it dry out. You're a waste of a pen. <laughs> Had some schmutz in there. A little bit of schmutz, not much, you know, just a little schmutz. But you don't want any really. So, I'm feeling a little bit stuck. I don't know where to go next. That was a neat idea. Um, I know things need to be developed more. Um, but I don't know what to do. So I might just move ahead with the assignment. The next step would be to like take these photos, bring them into Photoshop, make them black and white, kind of punch up their contrast and take a look at what I've got, kind of explore the spatial qualities in these images and see if any new ideas come to mind. So right there, some reflection that will hopefully loop back into some more exploration. I made a bunch of models.